Good morning. It's uh, Thursday, March the 3rd here. Uh, I had a conversation with somebody this morning briefly that, uh, that brought about this video. Uh, we were just chatting a little bit about kind of the war in Ukraine and Russia and, and, and what's happening. And this person was just sharing some of their concerns and, and, and how it's just affecting them and, and processing and, and where is God in all of this and, and some of those things. And, and I've had a few conversations like that over, over the week. And, and so I thought this would be, uh, well, we thought this would be a great opportunity um, just to try and encourage uh, the church, um, strengthen our faith in the midst of, of some very difficult and uncertain times. Um, first, let me say this, is the, the war in the Ukraine with Russia right now, this is, this is a tragedy for sure. And what is happening is difficult to process and, um, and finding reasons why and, and why the world let this happen and all these things is, is very difficult. And if we're trying to find some kind of a logical explanation to it that will suffice, we're never going to. But I do want to say this. Throughout most of our lifetime, so whether you're older or younger than me, is there have been wars uh, taking place all over the world. Um, for most of my lifetime, there's been wars plaguing the Middle East, and, and yet it's become almost so normal that we don't even think about it. And the loss of life there is no less tragic than the loss of life what we're seeing right now. I think due to some technology and, and some other reasons that we're not going to get into this morning, um, just due to some of the unique things that are happening today, this war is receiving so much more coverage and you turn on the news or social media and you just can't get away from it. And, and it's so much more in our face. But these things have been happening all through the history of the world. Um, nation wants to conquer another nation and control and have power. Uh, even in the book of Daniel that we've been reading and studying, we've, we've seen that as the Hebrew people were taken off into exile, conquered by Babylon. And we can think, man, God, what are you doing in the midst of this? And we've talked about that in Daniel. And yet, Daniel and his friends are steadfast in God's sovereignty, that God has purpose even in the, in the midst of some crazy situations that we don't understand and we don't know how to process and how to even think about. You know, I hope what this does for us is, as we see some of this maybe more in our face than, than we have over the last number of years, is that our hearts soften towards the refugee, to someone who is fleeing their country for whatever reason, whether war or persecution, that they're fleeing where it's not safe, coming to perhaps Canada where they don't know the language, they don't know the culture, they can't communicate very well to people, they have to start over from a, from a job standpoint, even though they have qualifications more than we could ever probably even know, and yet they see that as a better option. Perhaps this will soften our hearts towards them and make us realize that we have been living in a, in a truly remarkable time in our culture here with unprecedented freedoms. I hope that that makes us think more of those who are in these types of situations. You know, Jesus says to us, and I'm going to read here in Matthew 24, and, and don't mishear this. Jesus is talking about the end times and what it's going to look like. I don't know that we're in the end times. Nobody does. Jesus clarifies later on in this chapter that nobody knows the day, the time, the hour. But what the pattern of Jesus is presenting to us is something that we as Christians need to understand and prepare for. Here's what he says. This is 24 verses 3 to 8. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will the sign be of your coming and of the close of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead me astray. Sorry, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these things are but the beginnings of the birth pains. And Jesus goes on, and I would encourage you to read that chapter. Not in the sense of starting to worry, like, is this the end? Is the tribulation going to come? What does this all look like? But in the sense that Jesus is preparing us, that the world is only going to get more chaotic. As 
as man fights against God and as they impose their own will and as they take their own choices instead of submitting to God, there's going to be more war. There's going to be more fighting. And again, I think for those of us who have lived in, in this time with this unprecedented peace, for us anyway, now that we're being bombarded where we see all these ha things happening, it's hard for us to process. And, and I'm not saying it should be easy for us to process. What I'm saying is it shouldn't take us by surprise. Jesus says it's going to get worse, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get more difficult for Christians. It's going to get more difficult for anyone as people rise up and refuse to submit themselves under God. I think this, this season in life now, with so much uncertainty going on, this gives us a great opportunity to share the gospel of Christ, the gospel of peace. That while in this world there's fighting and there's tribulation, that we can have peace with God. That we can remember that even if this is the very end, and even if the world is about to come to an end, that we can know that we will get to go and be with God and we will have peace for all of eternity. So that's what I want to encourage you with today. That's what I want to remind you of. When we see crisis and catastrophic events happening and things that we don't know how to process that should lead us to calling out for the mercy of God all the more because we don't we don't know what to do we don't have the understanding of what needs to be done and then as I say with the reality of the media pushing this war uh, so much harder than other things and other crises and other catastrophes that have happened throughout the world Let's not forget that there are people in every corner of the world fleeing their country, fleeing their homes because it's not safe. What are we as Christians going to do? How are we going to respond to that? This is not a new thing. History is repeating itself. Uh, I said this morning to the person I was talking to, is one thing that man is really good at is fighting, is war. And apart from Christ, we push our own agendas and so if we can allow the power of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit in us to remind us that we exist to show love and grace and mercy to those in need, may that remain our focus and may we not worry about what might happen because Jesus promises us it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse till the end. And so we remain not with this kind of pessimistic, well, the world's going to end, but rather with this as the needs become more obvious to us, how are we going to respond? So let me just encourage you and challenge you with that. God is still on the throne just as he has always been. The things that are happening now are not unique and brand new. They just maybe are more obvious and we become more aware of the hurt and the pain and the fighting that exists in the world. So may we gather together as people. May we pray for those who are being caught up in the crosshairs, those who are losing their homes, their loved ones, their lives. May we pray for them. May we see how can we tangibly step out in faith and in obedience to help the refugee. I hope this encourages you. I hope it challenges us as Christians here in the West to consider what our role can be to help those in need. Have a, have, have a good week, I suppose. Um, it feels funny to say that, but at the same time, is remember, our hope is not in the circumstances of the world. Our hope is that we know that Christ has overcome and that one day he will come and put all things to rest. And so may we wait eagerly for that day. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Bye-bye.